seen any action in the house or by any member of the house that tends to portray the house in the light that uh, uh, you are talking about. There is no desperation of any kind. If the house was desperate to push the bill, by now the public hearing would have been done. And also, the interactive session that took place on the 27th of July, where NGOs were you know, brought together to critique the, the, the document, wouldn't have taken place. I tell you that this house has not done anything different from the way that it has handled other bills, except that uh, um, some desperate individuals you know, have gone to town to misinform Nigerians about the document, and so they've generated unusual you know, a hype about it, and uh, that is why it has become so popular, you know. So talking about opposition to it, I don't think that uh, there's uh, uh, anything unusual about that again. Uh, a lot of these have been opposed by some individuals and supported by some. It is usual to see that some people are against and some are for. So there's nothing peculiar about this one, except the activity of uh, the sponsor of the campaign of calumny as contained in that of the and very in a treacherous uh, uh, video piece that was circulated. Now, people are concerned about whether uh, the preponderant opinion at the public hearing, you know, will be heard sacrosanct and the rest of it. Why is anybody bothered about that? It was any time that that didn't happen. You understand me? And if anybody wanted to suppress the opinion or views of uh, members of the public or NGOs, will that same uh, organization provide a platform for NGOs to come and critique the document in public? I don't, I don't think this is necessary. Let us, you know, you know, be realistic about this whole thing. For us in the house, we don't see the need for, you know, uh, worries. And uh, we have always been objective and we'll be, you know, very, very objective in whatever we do, and in particular, you know, this one, if at all this, you know, the public hearing is taking place, because for now, I don't know when it is taking place. It's clearly, you know, enunciated in the uh, objectives, you know, of the bill, which is already a public document which is known to everybody. It seeks to, you know, to enthrone and support transparency, accountability, to also ensure that the, 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 there is uh, effective, aid, aid effectiveness and people who are to benefit from its services are given the opportunity to participate and also that there is a common ground for, you know, uh, for coordination of activities by setting up a commission. The legislators have refused to tell the public what they aim. The Speaker of the House published his pay slip. What else does the public want to do about that? It's already in public domain. The truth of the matter is that our public, in most cases, want to hear the rumor, particularly with the advent of social media. Some people will just sit down at home and concoct some, you know, a falsehood and feed into the system. And once most of the people in the social media, you know, grab that, they get stuck to it. Whenever anybody comes up, government agency, be it executive, judiciary, or the legislative arm of government, tries to, you know, correct that by presenting the facts to the public, most people are not interested in that. You know, so I think it is completely wrong for anybody to say that, you know, because the legislature have not disclosed their salary, so they cannot, they don't have the authority to do their job or the moral right to do their job. The job of the legislature is to make laws. Even if there are issues in the legislative arm, it should not, you know, preclude the legislature from making laws for the good governance, security, and welfare of Nigerian people. That is it. So, but I think again, we need to correct that point. The speaker is the number one legislator in the Green Chamber and he has published his pay slip, and he has said to the world, this is what I am. If you think that there's anything more than that, I think there are ways to, to go about that. So you don't have to say, okay, fine, 
uh, a bill has been presented to the house. Because of that, the house has no moral right. How many bills do we have there? And the, the legislature is not seeking to, to regulate the NGOs. Get that clear. Even the sponsor of the campaign of calumny knows the truth, even if he's hiding that. This bill has nothing to do with the legislative and um, having any supervisory oversight over NGOs or controlling any NGOs. The, it, the job of the legislature is to, it, to, to give legitimacy to organizations like the one we're talking about through lawmaking processes by setting up you know, um, a regulatory organization. Yesterday, I was in um, Water Committee public hearing on regulatory agencies, similar one for water resources in Nigeria. The people came there, minister, everybody, they came there, supported it. That's regulation. That's the same commission too, a similar commission rather. There are commissions all over the place. You have NCC and the rest of them. These are babies of, you know, uh, uh, legislation. You have the Department of Petroleum Resources that is a regulator of the oil and gas industry. The operators in oil and gas, they bring their own money. It's not government money necessarily. They're private organizations, but then there's a regulatory organization which was, was, was backed by an act of the parliament from the same parliament with the same you know, level of uh, transparency or opacity, whatever you call it. But that shouldn't stop people. So why this unusual interest in this particular one? Why? I wish it is. I wish it is being pushed by the executive, you know? I, I think some people will just sit down in their homes and be concocting all sort of, you know, repugnant <coughs> uh, 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 materials to, to, to fool Nigerian people. Is Buba, <coughs> is uh, <coughs> Honorable Buba a member of the executive or has he become the essay to the president on legislative matters? The same set of people said that this document was plagiarized that it was co co copied completely from Sierra Leone. Okay, is the executive from Sierra Leone? I don't know what I, uh, people are talking about, honestly. I, I think we need to be more careful. I think we need to present ourselves more mature before the public than some people are trying to do about this bill. This bill is purely an individual bill, presented to the House, treated like any other bill, and now sent to a committee. And it's been here for several months. The House has not taken a single action on it. The House has not pre pre uh, provided funds for public hearing. And people are crying. I don't understand, honestly. Assuming that the House is desperate about it, long time ago, there would have been public hearing. Now, I don't have any business doing opinion sample on this. I'm not doing opinion survey. I have no business doing that. I, I talk about it because press people ask me questions. I've not gone to any press house to talk about it. You know, I'm not doing any advocacy on this. But because I chair the committee that's going to do the public hearing, and then because um, some CSO and NGO operators have decided to popularize the bill by way of lying about it, for instance, an individual took it upon himself to tell the world that this is the worst bill ever and that it is against um, religious organizations. Whereas in the document it is stated categorically that any organization that has any bearing with religion or ethnicity is excluded. Because of this misinformation, people are now so apprehensive and so they are concerned about it. You know, I'm even surprised that some church people, they come here, they tell me that, oh, well, I'm told you're a Christian, so how can you be against churches? I said, tell me exactly where in this document. I present the document to them and I show them the, the provision that insulates, you know, uh, 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 faith-based organizations. And they get shocked. I say, is this the document that this uh, fellow is talking about? I said, show me any other one. Hey, we find it five. That is it. So it is because of the misinformation that has been going on by people who have so much to hide. Let me tell you, there is no community in this country where you don't have the good, the bad, and the ugly. The bad people are the people promoting this campaign against you know whatever the parliament is doing. That I can assure you. The, the House 
has not said there are 400 angels. The bill itself didn't say there are 400 angels. The bill is not particular about any angel. The bill is about setting the standards, the templates, you know, for coordinating activities. The bill is trying to harmonize the process of registration and then, you know, uh, 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 self-regulation and all of that. You know, the objectives as clearly indicated by the, the drafter of the bill are meant to ensure transparency. These are the things that are already happening in other commissions that are similar to the one that is being proposed by that bill. So uh, the fact that, yes, it is implied in the whole of those you know, provisions that it seeks to protect the country against the unlikely events that some NGOs, be they national or international, might have some ulterior intention. It has happened in so many countries. If you understand me, you don't have to wait till it happens. And so there's no point naming a particular NGO now. EFCC will name them. Um, um, ICPC will name them, you know, because they have some level of, you know, involvement in their registration and all that as we speak now. But they have not been able to do that because it is not their area of core competencies, right? If you now have a commission that is, you know, committed to this, this whole thing, then that commission will be able to identify you know, such organizations. But just to give you an idea of what that implies, which I think. So in the North West, for instance, a lot of NGOs have made away with what was meant for IDPs. This bill, even if it is passed into law, is not in a position to name those organizations. But it is the operators around it that should be able to identify based on what the law says based on what the practice you know will be at that time like, okay fine if you if you um you have the responsibility to provide two thousand bags of x products and it is discovered that you provided only one thousand two hundred you have to account for eight hundred that is the kind of thing that you know i think uh, you know uh, the author intends here